Let's texture the model we created in the basic spacecraft video. I'm going to start with this right engine cone because I placed it in the wrong place. So I'm going to move it to the left a meter where it belongs and oh that looks so much more symmetrical. Textures are applied to faces in face mode. So let's enter face mode. Uh, the, I have the isolation button on because that hides the other objects. For this cone, we're going to project the texture straight from the back. To do that, we need to orient the, the grid so that it's flat from the back. I'm going to move it right to that spot, and then I want to flip the grid so that it's oriented along the X and Z axes. That's the XZ button. There we go. There's our orientation. We're ready to project a texture. Textures are applied to selected faces. So let's select all those faces. I'm going to click in this window, select all those faces, and uh, we'll need the texture wrapper to do this. This toolbar, uh, I prefer to have it docked with the parts bar because it creates a tab at the bottom. we're going to project a texture onto this object. Let's use this copper grill to see the result. The size says that the picture is one meter on a side. So there it is, the grill texture repeated in one meter increments. In the texture wrapper window we see the, the outlines of all the selected faces and uh, one copy of the texture and how the texture landed on there. Now we didn't land right in the corner of that because the origin of our grid must not be in the center of our model and that turns out to be the case. Let's move the grid to the center and just repeat that projection. Copper grill, okay. Oh no, that looks better. The mouse wheel zooms this out by the way the right mouse button uh, pans this view. Alright, now let's apply a texture that's going to be more appropriate for a thruster cone. The faces have already been projected into texture space at one meter spacing. So let's just change the texture. Let's use, let's see what that looks like with the uh, black oblong slots. Well, maybe not a great thruster cone. Uh, but how about this decals and signs texture? Now don't confuse that with the part that's called a decal. That part has special rendering properties. This is simply a texture of useful uh, little bits that are uh, that can be used all over your model. There's our one meter uh, repetition of that on our model. It doesn't look very good but let's scale this down. It's always good to, to do something in this window. I right click and drag. That'll move the focus into this window. Uh, otherwise you'll find that focus switches between these windows in sometimes an annoying way. Let's right click that to make sure we have the focus. Push S to scale it and I'm going to scale this down really small. And I'm going to push G to grab it. I'm going to grab it and drag it right over here because that's kind of where I want it. Now see we've got these little bits of metal here. Let's, let's grab this and drag it on top of this silvery looking one. And uh, stretch it a little bigger. It looks like I'm not centered very well. Uh, grab. This is often an iterative process until you get it just the way you want it to look. But since I don't want to spend all day on this, uh, that that looks like a nice shiny cone, but let's try some of the other ones. Let's grab this and try that on this old shield texture. I find I, for some reason, I like this for thruster cones. I use it a lot. Or how about this elevator button? Ooh, that's kind of interesting. Now, the uh, decals and textures, or the decals and signs texture, has a lot of transparency. So if I stretch this too big, you'll see that I get strange transparent things happening. Uh, it's, it's really better to give it a little bit of a margin. Just to make sure you don't hit those transparent 
pixels in the texture. Okay, well that'll work. Now, personally, I'd rather not the back of the cone look like that, so I'm going to deselect those faces, and I'm going to just select these faces on the back. That's their outlines, but let's make sure that we have only the faces we want, and we did Okay, I didn't get the bottom of the bowl through there. All right. I'm going to move this over here somewhere. Let's give it a little rib pattern on the back. Grab that right there. Let's stretch it a little bit. You'll see that each face is entirely independent of the other faces. Uh, these are just handy tools for doing these in mass. Okay, I think I can live with that look for my thruster cone. Alright. Let's turn off face mode and we'll see the rest of our model. Now I'd like to do the uh, left cone exactly like that. and uh, I don't really want to go through all that, so how about if I just copy the right one to where the left one is. The left one, I'm going to use the uh, grid mover to measure. We'll see that it's it looks to be uh, eight meters to the left. And I can tell that in the top right corner there's a box that says minus eight comma three. That's telling me my current uh, grid coordinates. So it's eight over and three up. I'm going to hit escape and delete to delete that engine cone. I'm going to select the right engine cone and I'm going to enter minus eight here. Now you've seen that you can move objects using this box. If I hit enter now, it'll move this cone to the left 8 meters. If I hold control down when I hit enter, it will copy it to the left 8 meters. That's exactly what I want, and there's our uh, textured thruster cones. Okay, I think we're ready to move to the next part. Let's, let's work on the hull. Again, texturing is done in face mode, so let's enter face mode. There's our hull. The orientation of the grid always affects the projection of the texture. So let's start with it just oriented back to the, uh, the, the center, so we can see what we get. Now let's control A to select all these faces. This time I'm going to use the texture unwrapper. This is akin to uh, pictures you might have seen of paper uh, boxes unfolded to where you can glue them back together again. Uh, this uses some method to unfold all the faces of the selected, all the selected faces onto the texture. In this case, we're going to use the material texture. This is a special texture because it changes based on the um, type of metal that's used to build the spacecraft. Uh, I'm going to make my hull look like that. We're going to tell it that this thing is three meters on a side, and uh, unwrap by facing. This one's a good one. Okay, that looks fine. It's a little repetitious. I think these walls were four meters tall. Let's try doing that with four meter uh, size on the texture. Okay, unwrap by facing. It's a decent looking ship. I don't. I'm not quite happy yet though. Let's try doing. Uh, 12 meters on a side. Okay, I, I think I like that better. It doesn't look quite so repetitious. Okay. All right, let's look at our, look at it all over. Oh, that worked okay. Top, bottom, sides, everything. That. That's a competent pattern. You, now you could use, do each face individually and get just exactly the look you wanted, but uh, I usually want to get it done. That's done. Okay, next part. Let's do the interior. Let's move inside. Take a look inside here. I'm going to select my interior. Now once again, the position of the uh, grid is going to affect this, so I'm going to snap that grid to the corner of my room. We need to be in face mode. I'm going to select all the faces, and we're going to use our texture unwrapper again. 
and we're going to use the wall uh, oh, wall cargo. What does that look like? Oh, that's kind of neat. Make sure you have this Z axis selected here. You could try it with the other ones. You'll see what happens. But in our case, we want Z. And we're going to unwrap by face. Now, that's a little big. Let's unwrap that again. These walls are 3 meters tall. So let's go 3 meters. Oh, that looks better. But that's not the texture I want. Let's let's try that with wall uh, pipes. No, I wanted the wall metal one. There we go. Yeah, that's the classic Hazaron spacecraft wall. And I'm going to deselect all these polygons. I want to find the floor. There it is. They're sometimes hard to find. And I have the floor selected. Let's change the floor, and uh, for this we could, we could use whatever you want. I'm going to use the uh, the uh, unwrapper because I don't have to worry as much about the orientation of the grid. There's some wall tiles here somewhere. How about these oblong tiles? But let's make them four me two meter square. Okay, there's our floor. I'm not sure that I like that. I can do the, the rubber dots. Make it look like somebody's shop. That's actually the one I wanted. Unwrap my facing. There you go. And let's do the ceiling and get this done. Unwrap. Let's use the... Uh, that thing. That might be a little repetitious. I'm going to make that uh, 4 meters instead. Symmetry isn't good, so I'm going to move my grid there and do it again. Oh, there we go. That's alright. I guess we can live with that. I think we have one thing left, and that's the door. Don't overlook those doors, especially when they're open. There we go. We got this drab door. Let's go into face mode. Uh, select all the faces. We're going to do this one quickie. Unwrap it. Let's use the... Uh, this metal scratch and rust is just a good general uh, pattern, especially on surfaces that you plan to paint. Uh, let's make this uh, two meters and unwrap by facing. There we go. Uh, that's probably a competent enough door. It looks different from the wall. I think we're going to call that done. Let's go look inside. Inside looks fine. 